on now. Hope he was. Hey, hey everyone, how you going? Certainly hope you're great. Welcome back to the Moto Dynamics live show. Now this week it's actually live. Um, and last and week, professional. And oh, I'm not sure about the professional. <laughs> <laughs> now you might hear Jess in the background there, or Neil might be cutting to her. Um, so um, my tech team's back. Neil's behind the scenes. Jess is going to say hello. <laughs> uh, when my tech team gets the camera up. <laughs> so, so we're going to Jess. Oh, no, going one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting the pressure on my tech team. There we go. There hello. You go. Hello. <laughs> so yes, we're all back and refreshed from a lovely holiday away. And uh, yeah, sorry, you have to. Hang on. Are you oh, ready wait. For it? Hang on. Jessica first. You can look at the camera. Oh. Yes. Stop the <laughs> I'm not looking at the TV. <laughs> but no, yes. Are you ready you, for you it? can do it. Neil's gone all fancy schmancy on fancy. us. Oh, hang on. Oh, oh Jesus. So, now, you watch this. This is technical. This is, oh. <laughs> oh, did it work? Yeah, it worked. Oh, well, wow. Cut back to that. Yeah. So, back, back to, to me. No uh, worries. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. What's the name? Um, I certainly hope you're great on this Australia Day um, public holiday. How You can't help but not being great, can you, being on a public holiday? Unless, of course, if you're a shift worker. So a big shout out to the shift workers who may be working, unfortunately, for the long weekend, but unfortunately that's life. So if you are working, I might be interrupting your crib break, so that's great. I hope you saw, you got yourself a cuppa. Um, if you're not and you're on public holidays, then you may be having a cuppa or something even else, who knows from there. But we've got a great show for you today. Um, we're going to be covering um, servicing of master cylinders. Um, and, um, and, and then next, the week after that we'll be going to the caliper so it's, it's a bit of a timing thing so we're going to be doing that um, we've got some feedback from the last show we've had some great response from people lots of feedback, it's been fantastic thanks so much for all the feedback um, I've really dumped Jessica in it Jessica's going to do a, a review of a 21 bike that's just been released so I only just told her then so she's panicking so she's going to yes. do that so, so hopefully my review will just you know entice you to just get that new factory 2021 <laughs> <laughs> so um so we'll see how we go there we've got some news um and a, a couple of sales uh, opportunities for you and then we'll give you an idea what's going on next week so what do you reckon? Shall we? Um, I get reckon in we should head in onto your technical. Technical. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. He's doing the. Um, I'm, I'm going to be doing the master he's cylinder. He's doing the master cylinder. Thing. Did so, you not hear him? He said he'd do the master cylinder and then I'd do my review. Yep. So what I'm going to show you today is servicing your master cylinder, your front brake master cylinder, or or your clutch. Okay, so that's the, that's the game for today. So what I normally do is I, I normally park the bike near my vice, take the front master cylinder off, and, um, and I, always, I always have a tray for the parts. So, <laughs> so why, why do you have that, Simon? Because... If I see something left in the parts ah. box, I know I haven't put everything back. So, Very smart. Um, and, and also, another good reason is it stops you from dropping something or losing it. So that's why I always do that. So what I normally do is I just pop, pop the mask cylinder in the vise so it's firm. Just um, remove the lever. So how long does one of these normally take you to do? Oh, it should only take me about 10 minutes. Okay, so, so then can... that everyone leaves him 20 minutes of talking, okay? So you can test me. What what we got? What's the time? It is 12.06. 12.06. Do, 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 okay, do, see do, how we go. No singing, Jessica. I was just doing background music like they normally do when they count down the time off. No worries. Just thought it would be encouraging. So I've got the lever off. The next thing to do is to pop your boot off there. If you get yourself a little seal pick or something small, just to pop that off. 
Now, should you be careful doing that? Is there any chance yep. of harming the boot? Um, yeah, you don't want to rip the boot, so you want to get something fairly fine. You'll see I've got a seal pick. Yep. Do your boots so, come with heels or are they flat soled? No, are they like no, gum no, boots? No, or? None of that sort of stuff. These are, these are rubber boots. Rubber boots. Now, the thing to be careful is when you pop this off, this pin, which activates between your lever and the master cylinder plunger, has actually got a spring, spring in it. So just be mindful you don't lose that. That will be handy in your tray. Now what you're going to need, I don't know if Neil's doing his technical thing. Oh, he needs to go up above. You'll be able to see here, so what I'll show you here, is this thing here is your actual master cylinder plunger, um, or cup. People call it all sorts of things. That's the thing that actually puts your brakes on. And that's your hydraulic piston in there. So that there is held in by a retaining clip. We remove that retaining clip and that master cylinder piston can come out. So you need a small pair of circlip pliers for that. Get this one here. Right. So just pop that circlip out there. You'll see there's a retaining washer there as well. And then you'll see that your uh, master on the piston has actually popped up because it's spring loaded. There's a spring sitting down in there as well. So I can just pop that out and you can see it's got a bit of suction. Now there's your spring. Now I might as, might as well just show you a couple of things here. Right. So if you've never never had the master cylinder piston out, this is what that looks like. Is Hang that, is that in the shot, Neil? Back to one. Sorry, we were back just doing three. a bit of technical um, issues behind the scenes. A couple, a couple of um, technical things, okay. Okay, so if you've never pulled a master cylinder <coughs> piston out, this, this is what basically it looks like. It's got a spring there. It's got two two rubber cups. Now the the first one starting from the outside in is basically a wiper, and that just keeps all the dirt and stuff out of your master cylinder. The second one here, this one here, is actually the hydraulic cup, which actually puts the pressure on your brakes, and it is actually convex. I think that's right. It's convex. Yeah, not concave. I have to think about that one. So it's con convex, so as, as you pr pull your brake lever in and this piston gets pushed in, it pushes the brake fluid down to your caliper and puts your brakes on. That's basically how it works. Now, it's a good idea when you pull these out, inspect it. If you've got good eyesight, which I haven't got now, um, it pays you to put it under a bit of light. But what I often do is just run my nail around it and just feel for any nicks or cuts in it. That one feels pretty good. And if you've got good eyesight, just have a good look around, see if it's in good nick. Okay, so that fits your cup. Now all you need to do from a servicing point of view, as you said, make sure that's all nice and clean. Um, get a little bit of PBR rubber grease. Now I use PBR, there's different brands. Um, if you go down to super cheap you'll see but what you need to do is buy rubber grease that's compatible with brake fluid and all you need to do is put a just a smear a smear on the cup like that a smear on the on the other seal and that way nice and lubed now before we pop it in the trick is just to top the mask cylinder up with brake fluid up to the top here. So I don't know if your camera's any good for that, Neil. Yep, we're all good. So I'll just gently top that up. Well, too much. How are we going for time, Jess? Whoa, it is 11 minutes past. So what do you got? Here we go. Now, the trick, trick of this is is if you just top it up like this, you're not going to have any problems with air or anything like that. So just top your brake fluid up to the top. I'll probably put a touch too much in there, but it doesn't matter. It's just yeah. going to get wasted over. So you just put your, your piston back in. 
like such. So it's just sitting in there. I might just soak up a bit of that excess so that when I put the circlet back in. So Simon, you might want to open your mouth a little bit clearer because apparently you're coming across a bit muffled. Uh, and I said to Manus, we, sh I I said to Manus, we um, should really give you the benefit of the doubt. You are old, you are getting yeah, muffly in that. Yeah. But then he came back and said, well, <laughs> it's like he's talking underwater, which we all know you can do. Well, that's, so. that's, that's my tech man's fault. He's got to get the cameras you've and the to, microphones set up. You've got to talk to the microphone. I've actually got to go buy another cable. How, to fix this up. How, how am I? <laughs> no, you're not. You're not buying another cable. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm working here, and you want me to talk there, oh. so that's a bit yeah. Irish. So I'm probably talking too fast. So I'll slow down for these young people who you know have difficulty in hearing. But no, actually, Robin Rogers actually, actually said to me, "What we're going to have to do? What's that? We'll have to get you." To listen to the sound of music, oh, so then you can learn to open your mouth to do the sound. No, 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 no. no. Do not listening to the dear, sound of music. A female deer, get the mouth open. But I did. Robin the Rogers. Falls mainly upon the <laughs> yeah, Robin Rogers did say I need to have some um, execution language um, training. Execution, not execution. <laughs> oh my lordy! <laughs> oh. Ah, dear me. So th this is where sometimes it's handy if you've got three hands, <coughs> which I don't. You need another set of hands? No, nah, no, it's fine. So this is the trick. So like like I've done, I've top, topped up the brake fluid. I've got to talk to the microphone. <laughs> I've topped up the brake fluid. I've pop, popped the piston back on. Put the washer over there. Need me circlet pliers. Now, as you push this down, the brake fluid's going to get pushed back up into the reservoir. So, sir, clip, push that down. Oh, and just while we're doing it, because Simon's actually blind, so he has glasses on anyway, but you really should wear your safety glasses when working in a shed because you might just have had some fluid in the eye, fluid in the eye when it squirts out when you put that little cap thing thingamajiggity back on. The, the thingity bob. Yes. Uh, Jess's point's very valid, um, particularly and that's first. partly the reason why I soaked up the excess brake fluid. Or is that partly the reason why you wear glasses because you're blind because you have brake fluid going <laughs> oh, my yeah, pro eye. Probably burnt, burnt my retinas <laughs> over the years. <laughs> Now th this is just a point to make, um, I've put the circlet back in, now you'll notice if you have a good look when you do pull them out, there's actually two ridges, one for the circlet and then the outer one is for that rubber boot that I removed. So just make sure you've got the circlet down in the second ridge and, um, and go from there. Once you've got the circlet in place, just spin it around and make sure it actually is sitting down in that ridge. And you've got two minutes, Simon. Two minutes. And then your ten minutes is up. Ah, well, I'm not so. overstressed about the time. Do, 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 do. Um, pop, pop your rubber boot in and your the pin. Make sure you've got the spring on there. Now, <laughs> I'll show you this thing here, if you can see that, Neil. Yep, we're all good. Right, now I'll, I'll talk to this pin, but understand there's that your lever hits here, and then this pin here hits your master cylinder piston. So it's important to note that when we put back on, we adjust the just, lever. Just before you put that back on there, Dad, in yep. reference to sometimes people have problems with their the um, clutch acting a bit funny. Yeah. And that that that's, um, washer that's in there yep. can be bent because of that, can't it? Yeah, actually that's a good point now. Just Sometimes when, particularly with the clutch, because the clutch gets pulled all the way in, sometimes that washer there can actually get a bit damaged and end up a lip. And then this piston, when it's coming back out, it can catch on it. So that, that's a good point. If you're having a little bit of trouble with your clutch, doesn't seem to be releasing well, then just check that washer. <laughs> awesome. There we go. So pop, pop this back in like that. Oh, and um, Richard and Sue have said that they actually can hear you quite fine, so it must be our delicate younger ears that, um, you know... Are they saying Manus needs to open? Clear 
Uh, maybe, maybe it's because the young people switch off to me. <laughs> oh, that could be true as well. Uh, I'll get you for that, Manus. Um, we've just had um, Mark Atherton's finally made it to the crib, so he was obviously running a little bit late ah. behind for uh, lunch there, and Paul Peacock's joined ah. uh, the feed as well. So ah, welcome, cool. everyone. G'day, Mark. But he, um, what, were you asleep, mate? You missed the smoko belt. <laughs> And uh, how you going, Paul? Great to hear from you, mate. Right, so pop the lever back on. Now, with this particular one, the uh, the, the bolt holding the, the lever on actually has a collar on it. So you screw it down and it actually touches the lever. So you've got to make sure when you put this one in, don't over tighten it because you want your lever to be able to move freely. When you tighten this, the lock nut up, just double check. See the lever's gone tight because I've squashed it in a touch. Now I'll give you leeway because you are talking and we've all been interrupting, but uh, you are sitting at uh, a minute over. So, yeah, well that's, um, that's because you guys keep interrupting. Yes. It's as simple as that. So oh, well, if you want, I can set up a timer for next week. Ah, oh, well, and also... Dun, 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 dun. We could do. Um, Simon Thomas has just commented that um, he's watching along with the uh, the youngest member. Hey! Girl, how you going, Thomas? With the little lady. How you going? And, and what's the young lady's name? Uh, ah, that, now I'm not sure how we pronounce that. That's it's, it. It's, it was it's Sophia. Sophia? It's, it's on the lines of Sophia, but there's a Latvian... Twist. Yeah. So. so yeah, but it's got a J and something at the end of it. Ah, uh, no worries. But we're seeing them hopefully on the weekend, so I'll get the proper pronunciation. Ah, uh, awesome. No worries. So there you go, Simon. Congratulations on the new bub and to Chris, of course. Chris did all the work. You just sat around doing nothing as usual. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. So anyway, so we popped the master cylinder back on, on the handlebars. Now the trick. The trick is, I don't know if Neil's adjusted yeah, this, over top. this camera right. The most important thing is to replace once, your hand grips. Yeah, apart from replacing the hand grips, <laughs> um, make sure you set the lever where you you want to get on your finger, the right distance. So that's adjusted by this one here. Now with this one, it's actually this is actually a brake switch nut. And they're a bit of a pain, but what you need to do is put a bit of Loctite on that to set it up right. But make sure you get your, your lever length to suit your hand first. And then you adjust this bit here, which hits your first plunger. Now remember I showed you that plunger then hits the piston. Now what you must have is a little bit of free play there. If you don't have that free play, then you're in a little bit of trouble. You probably, with this one, you could probably go out a little bit more, get a little bit more free play. Right. So then the last bit to do is to check your brake fluid. Pop your cap off. We're not almost done. <laughs> really, because now it's 12.20. So yeah, but that's only because really, you and Neil keep really, interrupting me. Oh, no, you're really, really over time now. No way. Pop, pop the masters on the cap off. Top it up with brake fluid. Now. <laughs> Sorry, just had to laugh. What Paul are you P laughing about? Oh, Paul Peacock just welcomed Simon to the Never Sleep Again Club. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, they got me past that. <laughs> there we go. Now, when I, when I top up the master cylinders, make sure I've got it nice and straight, I top it up just to the point so you top your master cylinder cap up to the point that when you put your cap on then you just the brake fluid should just weep over again is this where we should so, have safety goggles on yes you should always wear glasses when you're working in a workshop but this is a, an, an important point top it up to the point when you put your rubber cap on and the cap that it actually just Overflows a bit. Quick, me, oh, I'm going to put it's, my safety glasses on just yep, in case. That. Now the reason for that is outside. you you won't have the brake fluid washing around when you're jumping up and down rocks and stuff like that, and potentially getting air into your system, or if you fall down or whatever. 
The air won't that's, take long to come yeah. out anyway. That's quite a common thing I've found, especially when I'm enduro coaching and that. Yep. A lot of people have bare, the bare, there's very little in the system and then when they lay the bike over yeah. and they pull the clutch in to pick the bike up and it's, it pumps the air in. Yeah, yeah. Now, speaking of hey, air... Have a second, Simon. Have you got the... um, Richard and Sue have just asked what brake fluid are you using? And as you can see, I've gone back to the safety glasses in case anything... Yep. Okay. Off from the side. Yeah, well, I'm using dot four. So refer to your bike manufacturing. I don't know if Neil's in um, thing there. Just jump over to it. Yeah. Okay. So on your cap, quite often they will specify. Check your bike. What the bike manufacturer recommends. Most of them use dot four, to the best of my knowledge. Now an interesting thing to remember: if you've got a gas gas TRS, um, anything with a um, diaphragm clutch. You may have a green master cylinder cap on your clutch. Now, and on that will be written mineral oil. So for your gas gases, TRSs, um, vertigos, stuff like that, you run mineral mineral oil in in your clutch. Don't go putting brake fluid in there. Okay. So that's a handy point. The um, the other thing you can do is. You shouldn't get any air in your system the way I just showed you how we do it. But if you want to, look, make sure you've got your glasses on. Before you put the cap on, just squeeze the lever in a little bit. Be careful because it'll squirt up. And you can see if there's any air in the system, it'll come up. Now, if you are doing that, there is a couple of bubbles come up. Just make sure your brake line is actually lower than your master cylinder when you do that. And then gravity will take care of it. The air will just come up as you just pump it a bit like that. But that's your trick. Pop your cap on. Have a bit of rag underneath there so you don't drip it on your on your toes. There we go. And it's now, now 12.23 and that's it, people. We're just yeah. going to have to wrap up the show because I've just spent so long if, talking about yeah, Master Yeah, getting interrupted all the time. So if you remember <laughs> last... Last show, I talked about your, your screw caps and putting some waterproof grease on it. So I've got some here. Pop that on. Bob Jarney. Is it all grease waterproof? No. Nah. Hmm. No, you buy specific marine waterproof grease. Oh, Leslie New well, There you go. You buy the tubs of Belray grease because I don't know what it is about them, but they never end. I oh, well, the tub, oh, the tubs. Oh, yeah, that's good. Tub oh, that's good. Dad, Dad keeps buying new ones when they go empty. <laughs> 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 right, so there you go. There's, there's your service of your master cylinder. And that's the same for your clutch, if, if you've got a dot four clutch. But if it's mineral oil, it's still the same process, but just use mineral oil. Um, there Mark we go. Mark Atherton has just said that the later model gas gas have covers both the same colour but still take mineral oil. Okay, well that's a good thing to be careful. Check check your manufacturing manual to make sure you know what should be in it. Now Jess. It, oh. oh yeah, now she's been bagging me. So now ah. the, the pressure's on Jess. Well you've only got five minutes so well, you that's all new, right. news Jess. <laughs> the news. News. What's the news? Okay, well, well, you, you, you news. Uh, oh, do, 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 uh, do, 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 I don't have a ticket. I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm having a cuppa. You can have a cuppa? Well, this news actually has to be read, I'm sorry, because he only just <laughs> pinned it on me like five minutes before the show. Oh, just, you can do the, you know, oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> Safety goggles have to come off. Um, yeah, so the Beta have just released their 2021 factory models. They are looking pretty schmicko, like always. And the difference between the standard and the factories this year. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get tested Here we go. <laughs> Neil said I flick up a little picture of the new factories that are out. With my mouse pad will work. Here we go. But the difference between the standard and the factory this year is that the factories come with magnesium casing and a titanium header pipe. There is also a new connector for the 125s, which is lighter and gives better flow. Uh, there's also this thing called a profile clutch disc. Now, I'm not exactly sure what that does, but it sounds fancy and looks like it might actually make your bike a bit better. I don't know, but, you know, <laughs> profile clutch disc. 
Go. Um, there is also a different cylinder head, which uh, provides a different squish volume. This is only for the 300s. Um, and there is, in the mapping, they have targeted lower R... PMs. PMs for power. Oh, go Jess. <laughs> I really don't like it. You're a pirate. Oh. Yeah. Um, and then the four strokes have a new ECU to improve spark and stability and strength. And then the all of the factories this year come with Michelin tyres instead of Dunlops. So now I hear that there is yeah. very limited <clears throat> stock. So uh, if my enticing yeah. uh, review on the 2021s have captivated you, you need to uh, speak to someone and yeah. order your bike ASAP. Yeah, yeah. no, Jess is dead right. Um, unfortunately, Beta advised me that there's going to be very limited numbers of factories. The exciting news is that they actually are making a 200 factory, um, and they are even rarer. Um, I've secured one here for WA. Um, and um, I'm not too sure how many are actually coming into Australia, but I know some people are going to be jealous because I've got one. So I'm um, coming into WA, so we'll see how we go. So um, so that's it. A um, couple of other bike things. We've, we've got a, um, a 2014 Beta 250 factory secondhand that's in and it's for sale. Uh, for 690 I think it is, and that. Um, bit of wrap-up from um, last year's show. Last Thank, year's show? Uh, last year's. Well, that's Jeez, right. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, my God. The, the last show. Um, thanks to Robin Rogers. Bit of feedback. If you're having difficulty removing bolts, um, heat is your friend. So if you've got a heat gun, something like that, put a bit of heat on it, particularly if it's aluminium. That'll heat up quicker than your steel bolts, and that'll help re remove them. I also talked about um, drowning bikes when we had a two-stroke here that was drowned. And someone said to me, what do you do when it's, if it's a four-stroke? Well, the answer is pretty simple. You, you just leave it in the water. It, you know, that's what the four anchors, aren't they? You know? <laughs> no, no. Similar process, but not quite the same as for the bottom end. Of course, you've got to drain the oils and all that sort of stuff for the cranks and stuff like that. Um, another thing, in the old days when we used to wash our bikes, we used to be paranoid about whether they'd ever start again. So we... Quite often, people used to start their bikes straight up after they washed them. Now, that's actually not a very good practice because if the bike hasn't dried out, you actually might be sucking moisture into the motor. So not a good idea to start your bike up after you've washed it. Give it a good dry down, let it dry out before you fire it up again. Um, I did talk about difference in throttle tubes. Now, there's your basically your slow and your fast in your white and black on your dominoes. But there are also a progressive um, throttle tubes that you can buy. I've not ever had them myself, but I, I believe you can get do those. Progressive is really more targeted at the high end of the field. Yeah. Um, so you can get to full throttle faster. Yeah, yeah. No worries. Um, and, and for detuning 300cc um, nutcase bikes, um, Gas gases, you can actually get flywheel kits for them as well, so that's another way you can uh, detune your bike a little bit. So, yeah, just a bit of feedback um, from uh, last week's show. Um, what else have we got? We've got uh, next week, Yeah. we um, will have a crack at servicing a front brake um, caliper. Um, and we'll show you that. We'll see how we go. And now, did you just, need to do a beer model? Um, I think we might do that next, next week. Next week? Sounds like, well, it is 12.30, so we can yep. um, wrap it up right now if you want. <laughs> we, we were going to get Jess to um, model um, some back protectors and, and that that we've got in, but given yeah, that she really shattered so much was, that oh, we're running out of time, you know. Really? <laughs> um, what I was going to say was, um, is that more for enduro or for trials? Like, do people actually well, use it for trials? Yeah, well, what's coming in now, you can you can actually get a chest and back protector, or you can get just a back protector. In the FIM now, World Championships, it's mandatory, you have to have a back okay. protector. So it's starting to come in. Yep. Um, but it is interesting, this is why I'm interesting to get some feedback. I've had two gentlemen buy these chest back protectors off me. Um, I haven't tried them personally myself, but it might be interesting for the enduro type guys who don't want 
too much armour on. They mm. want a bit, a bit of flexibility, flexibility, but they still want some um, chest and back protection. So they might be quite good for um, extreme enduro type stuff, or even even your um, you know weekend riders getting out and about don't want to have too much gear on. They're not yeah. going to go too hard. Then you know it might be yeah. good for that. You know. Hmm, interesting. Well, yes, yeah, yeah. so we can do a demo next week. Yep, so you can do your demo then. I'll be prepared. <clears throat> uh, no worries. Well, I don't know how long it's going to take me to do a caliper conversion. <laughs> well, you better start testing that theory out, and we need to get it within 10 minutes. So, oh, uh, yeah. choppity chop, and talk, we can start. Talk, talk about put pressure on me. Oh, put pressure on me. You put pressure on me to do a, uh, the, 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 the thing. <laughs> the, 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 the talking. No worries, guys. <laughs> okay, well, I think. That's, that's it from me, and is that... That's it from me. I have no news, so no news is good news, so we'll be sayonara. No worries. Enjoy the rest of your Australia Day public holiday. Great to have you on the show. Look forward to seeing you next week. So it's goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. See you later. Ciao.